Hello friends and a very very warm welcome to all of you to another video of Tutorials Point. Yes, you've read the topic very correctly and in this video we are going to discuss about some very very important and commonly used GRE words. Yes, I am sure many of you or I'd say most of you would, uh, you know, be preparing for GRE. GRE, as you all know, is a graduate record examination uh, for which many, many students appear for in order, uh, you know, just in case they have to go abroad for future studies or for many other reasons, right? So, uh, GRE is again a very, very common, uh, commonly given exam amongst youngsters these days. So we have created this video especially for you all so that you don't miss out on important vocabulary. And as I know that GRE is primarily based on vocabulary and that is a very, very big challenge for most of the students who appear for it, right? So stay tuned. In this video, you will, you know, learn many, many new and different words um, which you should definitely be aware of because you are appearing in GRE. Let's go ahead and prep ourselves for GRE. Yes, we can do it. Okay, so um, a very, very important word and um, very commonly it, uh, you will, you will uh, read this word whenever you are preparing for GRE and that is equivocal, right? So, what is equivocal? What is the meaning of equivocal? Well, equivocal actually means something that is not easily understood or explained, right? Or in other words, something, uh, you know, which has not been polarized or, um, you know, to put it easy, something that is not uh, completely some, wherein, you know, if you're saying something, you're not being clear. Uh, in whatever you are saying, you're supporting both the sides equal, uh, equally, right? So that is when uh, something is known as equivocal, right? So look at an example. Politicians have been known to provide equivocal answers to reporters' questions, right? So something that is not, uh, wherein you've not taken sides, wherein you've not very, very clearly um, mentioned your own opinion, yes or no, whether you support a particular thing or you don't support, you, you're somewhere in the midway, you're keeping the audiences very, very confused, uh, absolutely, you know, prevaricatious, whatever you're saying is not clear to them. So that is a situation which is actually known as equivocal and stay tuned this video this uh, word you should definitely register in your mind because you're going to come across it whenever you are preparing for gri right okay now second word is lucid right lucid is again uh, something that you should be cognizant of because it is uh, something that you're going to come across this is a word that you're going to come across while your preparation and lucid actually means something that is very clear and easily understood, right? So now you can contrast between both the words equivocal and lucid. So both are completely opposite, right? So equivocal means something that is not clear, that is like something that is in between and you're not sure of what um, the person is saying. Whereas on the contrary, lucid means something that is absolutely clear, right? So that is what is meant by lucid. Now look at an example. The lecture was lucid and straightforward, allowing the students to fully grasp the concepts presented. So here, lucid means something that is absolutely vague. There is uh, not even a speck of vagueness in that, right? Okay, now another important word, SUH. So what is SUH? Again, uh, something that you will definitely come across, something that you'll definitely uh, read while you would be preparing for GRE. And SOH, what is actually, uh, what is the meaning of SOH? So SOH means to, for example, something that is of a very, very high intensity, you're kind of, um, you know, mellowing it down, right? So make less intense. So something that is very, very intense, you are kind of uh, making it softer, making it less intense, right? So a massage can assuage the soreness in your muscles, right? So this is what it means. So if you, um, you know, you have a lot of pain in your muscles, you're fatigued, you just worked out and you're completely fatigued in your legs 
or in your body so definitely a massage can assuage your pain so that is the contextual usage so try and uh, you know get to use these words in your daily language so that when you are preparing for GRE it's not a challenge you're not doing something that is completely out of the world and you just have to cram up the vocabulary because cramming definitely um, vocabulary is something that is very very volatile and you for sure cannot um, you know memorize all the words um, in an instant so for that reason only if you repeatedly use it in your language would you get accustomed to it right okay now another important word prodigal so what is prodigal so prodigal means wastefully extravagant right so if you are what is extravagant extravagant means someone who just wastefully spends a lot of money is just way too um, you know into buying things or maybe uh, even if not needed you are just going on and on uh, spending money on something which you know is not as important to you right so someone who is wastefully extravagant is also known as prodigal right so a prodigal prince bought lavish gifts and planned expensive events right so here i'm sure uh, looking at the context you definitely are now able to gauge the exact meaning of prodigal right so this is um, how you're going to use it and i'm sure by now uh, most of us would have related to this word because uh, shopping is something which just tempts all of us doesn't it right so when we are just going on and on shopping even if we don't need it we are just being prodigal right okay so how about this word forward so forward actually uh, what it actually means is intensely enthusiastic or passionate so let us say you're very very passionate about maybe uh, maybe a particular game maybe a sport or maybe any particular accessory which you just love to buy so you're you're very, very enthusiastic let us say you're very enthusiastic about cricket so he is a forward cricket lover right so the child showed a forward fascination for superheroes pouring over comic books for hours right so this is what it means you are an ardent lover you're overtly enthusiastic about something and you just love to do it that is what is meant by fervid okay how about this word placate now placate is also an important word which definitely uh, you need to be aware of and you need to not just be aware of you need to actually um, understand and start using this word uh, for the fact that you're going to encounter it a lot um, during your GRE preparation so placate actually means make less angry or hostile or for that reason uh, let us say someone is uh, someone has an intense pain right so placate means to to pacify to pass it actually means to pacify so you're you're pacifying something whenever you are pacifying something that means that you are placating the entire situation when i went to the office the situation was intense there was a cold war going on but i placated it all so placate this is how you're going to put it to use so a parent may decide to placate a baby with a pacifier that's right so placate actually means to pacify to mellow down um, to probably make something you know less angry or hostile okay now audacious what is the meaning of audacious another important word um, for sure you will uh, you will for sure you will encounter this word uh, during your preparation a willingness to take bold risks right showing a lack or showing a lack of respect so there are different contexts according to which you're going to use it right so willingness to take bold risks now the new ceo pursued audacious initiatives to save the company from bankruptcy right so here you are uh, you're willing to take a risk or you're willing to take a bold step that is what is uh, meant by audacious here now if you if you actually um, try and use it in different contexts it can act, it can also mean that um, audacious would also because it is it is uh, you know it actually means bold um, so in that uh, you know context you can also use it the situ the student's audacious remark 
earned her a seat in afternoon detention that is right so here it here we are using it in the context of showing lack of respect right so in both the situations you can use it just that um, you need to be aware of the context where you're using it so just in case you happen to uh, see this word while you are preparing for GRE just be sure that it can be used in multiple contexts right so if you're aware then it won't be a problem and I'm sure you can uh, crack your GRE very well well friends these were a few words which are going to definitely help you a lot to crack your GRE for sure to cross your 320 target yes that is right we'll see you again in the next video till that time keep learning with tutorials point and tutorials have a good day